So we are borrowing resources from the future. So when we talk about sustainability, it's not about carbon dioxide only. It's about, are we creating value or are we creating problems? Many in this room are part of the food industry. The food industry, of course, is creating a solution. You give us food, we, we need food, so that's a solution. But you have to, to understand that you're also a big part of a problem creator. There are more people on this planet today, in this time, that die from eating too much than from too little. It's amazing, but it's a fact. More people die from heart disease, diabetes, cancer, things like that, than from malnutrition. You will not be able, if you want to be a leader, if you want to disrupt, if you want to have all the innovative skills that is necessary that you heard about this morning and will hear about later on, you will have to start focusing not on growth per se, but on growth in human well-being. Are we actually contributing to more human well-being or not? So this is why we have to change. It's not a question of why do we want to do this, etc. We have to change because as you can see, if we keep on going, business as usual will take us to a future that no one in this room will want to live to. So that is why we have to. And then, as I said, we can. Right now, in this time and era, we also can create a lot of change. More people than ever before. And that's interesting, because then we often focus on the next generation, the ones who grow up with all this technology, and they have all these abilities and these skills, and they know so much that we feel so stressed, everybody. And you know, you can see it on behavioral change, on new attitudes. I mean, it used to be quite simple. When we talk about work, what do you do for a living? There are two types of work, the ones who shower before work and the ones who shower after work. If you know now, if you have one of those millennials back home, I have a 17-year-old and a 20-year-old, you know that there is this new trend. It seems like they are not showering or working. <laughs> so I can hear myself giving advice. Because I'm experienced, I know how to create a good future, so I can hear myself. You have to go up in the morning, you have to get a good you know, education, good grades, good job. I have this recipe for a great future. What if I'm wrong? It's not about just attitudes and values. It's because of new technology. So this is old technology. This is tradition. This is best practice. You go to work each day, and you do the th pretty much, no offense, pretty much the same thing you did yesterday, but hopefully a little bit better tomorrow. So when you do budgeting, you take last year's result and you adjust everything by plus five or something, and then you're done. You can have a coffee break. That's linear thinking. That's tradition. That's best practice. That is uh, implementing lean and all of these kind of projects, you know. Nothing wrong with that, but this is the problem. Then we face new technology. New technology looks like this. It starts out on the negative. This is costly. People are shaking their heads in disbelief, very doubtful. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean a thing. It's 0.1%. Why do you care, you know, those fools? Just a small, tiny startup. And then on it goes, and then all of a sudden, new technology is actually working. More efficient than the old technology. And then we have early adopters, and then we have followers, and then we have exponential growth. So this is disruption. Disruption is not. I hear so many people today talk about, well, we are in this new disruptive technology. And, and then when you see it, it's like, yeah, we have created this app so you can find the, the gadget you want in store in your phone. That's not disruption. That is making the blue line a little bit more efficient by using new technology to make the old same business model, still the same business model, but make that more efficient. Disruption, it's very easy to know where will disruption occur. Just look for inefficiency. Wherever you see inefficiency, you know that there will be disruption. The problem is because you focus on return on investment when you go into these projects. The true definition in this time and era where we see speed as the most significant force, the true definition of ROI is risk of ignorance. What does it mean if we don't understand how we could actually create value? More value, less resources, much greater efficiency. Well, it means that then you're the blue line. 